today we're going to go over two huge mistakes that I see literally everybody making in Call of Dragons. What's going on guys? Cheers. Now Call of Dragons is still a very new game and because of that a lot of players are jumping in for the first time and they're leveling different heroes and they're investing in different artifacts and people are rushing to test things. They're rushing to fight different wars against a bunch of other players because it is a war game after all and like that's why people downloaded the game. But I'm here to advise you that we should be pumping the brakes just a little bit on all the chaos here in the game because the two mistakes that a lot of people are making are mistakes that are going to have more long-term consequences on your account and in games like call of dragons or really any strategy game or rpg there is opportunity cost to everything that you do so let's talk about the first massive mistake that i'm seeing virtually everybody doing right now and that is leveling up their legendary heroes and using their universal legendary tokens to boost the skill levels of these heroes this is absolutely insane for two reasons the first thing and this might be a little bit more obvious to players who have played games like rise of kingdoms but if you level up the star level of a hero it will unlock additional skills for that hero and anytime that you add an additional skill to that hero it is added randomly amongst the skills that you have unlocked so for Emery's here for example you could see here I got his first skill to five and then I went ahead and added a second star to him which unlocked his second skill now if I add an additional skill to Emery's the only skill that I can go in is the second one if we take a look at a hero like Garwood you could see that I've also leveled him up in fact I've leveled up Garwood much higher than I've leveled up my Emery's but I have not added a second star to him and why is that it's because his first skill is only at three which means i haven't gotten the maximum benefit out of this first skill and if you didn't know the first skill on any hero is what's called the rage skill and this is the skill that unlike the others which are all passive skills the rage skill is an active skill so as you're fighting in the open world you're going to accumulate rage and once you hit a thousand you're going to trigger your rage cycle from your first year commander then from your deputy and these raid skills are the most powerful skills on any hero in call of dragons and so if you unlock that second star before this first skill is at five well now anytime that you add an additional skill to that hero it will have a 50 percent chance of going into the better skill and a 50 percent chance of going into the worst skill whereas if you're doing what i did with garwood right now if i add another skill to him it is guaranteed to go into his best skill now this isn't as big of a mistake with epic heroes because you're going to get epic hero tokens much more frequently than you're going to get legendary hero tokens and also it takes fewer epic hero tokens to max out this hero if you want to get all of the skills for an epic hero to five and unlock their awakening skill it costs 440 epic hero tokens whether you collect the specific hero tokens or if you use the universal tokens that you can exchange for any hero it's a lot right 440 is a lot because these do feel pretty rare but eventually you will get there especially because the universal epic hero tokens are more common than the legendary hero tokens here but not only that in order to get a legendary hero skills to five meaning every single skill is five and then you unlock their awakening skill it costs 690 legendary hero tokens so not only are legendary hero tokens more rare than they are for epics but you need more of them to finish off that commander so again it's not as big of a mistake with epics because let's say for example my guanwin i've unlocked these two skills here and let's say i really want this second skill to five before i want this skill to five and now that i've unlocked both of them i can't control which one the skill upgrades will go into that is unfortunate but remember eventually both of these skills are going to get to five and then you've fixed your hero like for example on my indus i actually brought my indus to two stars before getting her first skill to five let's say that i regret this and i really want this first skill to five well there's really no way to fix that other than leave them there do not unlock more of the stars and just be patient and eventually you're going to fix it even if this second skill goes to five first then you're going to guaranteed get the rest of the skills in this one and that's how you fix the hero it will take time and patience uh, and if you're wondering why i unlocked the second skill for indus it's because this is a gathering hero and I honestly don't care about this first skill at all I'd rather get this second skill to five first if I can if not then it's fine but the skill upgrade order and cost
trust is only one part of this the part that a lot of players are either forgetting or ignoring even if you've played rise of kingdoms is using the legendary hero tokens i see so many players especially whales but also free-to-play players investing their universal legendary hero tokens into heroes that they get from the gold keys that they get from the golden chests here in the tavern now right now in call of dragons there aren't that many legendary heroes so you may be tempted to take your universal legendary hero tokens and invest them in some of the heroes that you already have acquired but this is a huge mistake the only people that should be doing this are people who are spending thousands of dollars on call of dragons i've spent now i have personally spent less than a thousand dollars on this game and i've accumulated as you can see here 110 universal tokens some of them are season one tokens the others are just complete legendary hero universals and even i am not investing a single legendary hero token into any of these heroes except for kinara and we're going to talk about her in a moment but I cannot express the magnitude of this error. This is an absolute huge L. This is a huge L. Do not do this. Why is that? Well, first of all, the heroes that we have in the game right now, some of them, yes, they are very powerful. I'm seeing Emery's do absolute work on the open field. I'm seeing Velen do absolute work. These are Giga Chads. These are the heroes that all the whales are using and they're getting really good results. But you and I both know that the developers of this game are going to continue to add heroes. And we know that for sure, because we have like Madeline and Bakshi which haven't come into the game just yet at least not in the newer servers and it's not going to stop there and the way that we know that for sure is that here we see that some of the hero tokens are designated to a specific season so here you could see the s1 here I can only exchange these season one custom tokens for heroes that you get as you assume in season one which implies the existence of season two heroes season three heroes and so on and as they release more heroes we know that they're going to be more powerful that's called power creep and it exists in every single game whether you play the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game or you play rise of kingdoms it doesn't matter there exists power creep in the newer content that just keeps players engaged it gives you a reason to log in and collect the new things and also it gives the whales a reason to spend more money with that being said these legendary hero tokens can be used as far as we can tell on any legendary hero so why would you use them on a hero that you could obtain in the tavern for free when you can save them for let's say six months and use them on a season two hero which we know almost certainly is going to be more powerful than the heroes you have in the tavern and not only that but you're going to get the heroes from the tavern for free over time just by doing events by collecting gold keys and yes the progress on these heroes is going to be incredibly slow but it's still going to happen over time and let's say that even if the season two heroes are only as good or maybe not as powerful well then you can go back and invest the rest of your legendary hero tokens into the legendary heroes that you were accumulating over time and now you'll actually have a better gauge as to how many of these you need to invest in those heroes because you'll have already unlocked maybe one or two additional skills on that hero in the meantime for free from the tavern now i did mention before that kanara was an exception and she's not the only one madeline is also going to be an exception here in call of dragons the reason that kanara is an exception is because this hero is not one that you can get for free over time yes you can get her from the lucky spin event and if you have some gems that you got free to play then you can use those gems on the lucky spin event you have to buy tickets to do that and maybe you can get her for free but there's a limit to that right there's a limit to how many gems that you can get as a free-to-play player and if you guys missed it i actually did just make a video talking about a ton of different ways to get free gems for free-to-play players so go ahead and check that out on the channel but kanara is not in the same boat as the other legendary heroes that you find in season one so if you are a whale if you are spending a lot in the game then kanara and madeline are absolutely some of the heroes that you can consider using those universal legendary hero tokens on however i would encourage you to use the season one tokens first why is that because 
these have a limit to them you can only use these on season one heroes and if we go back into my item list if I tried to use one of these tokens you can see that I can use this token on any of the tavern heroes or I can use them on the lucky spin heroes like Kanara so some of these heroes like Garwood or like Thea or Nico or Velen these are all heroes that I can obtain for free by opening opening the tavern keys and again I understand that you're going to collect them very slowly but you're still going to collect them over time Kanara does not fall into that bucket you will not be getting her for free over time and of course you can spin the wheel but as we mentioned there's a limit to that so of all these heroes the hardest ones to get are the lucky spin heroes so in a world where this token can be redeemed for a more common hero or a more rare hero you might as well go for the more rare hero especially because they seem to be better anyway I think Kinara is the most powerful choice here now Velen and Emery's who is glitching out right now apparently they're both very powerful but again as a free-to-play player if you're looking long term if you're looking a year from now they are more likely to be power crept out of the game than a hero like Kinara so to conclude this portion of the video I would say use all of your season one universals on one specific lucky spin hero of your choosing whether that's saving it for Madeline or for Kanara or whoever else you can do that the legendary hero tokens should only be used on the wheel exclusive heroes for wells but you probably should save them especially if you're a low or mid spender you should probably save these and use them on another hero that comes out in season two or beyond because they're going to be more powerful anyway one last important note for those of you who are spending in the game whether you're a low spender or a well the daily deal here this daily bundle you will be able to switch this to the other tavern heroes as well as Kanara and Madeline later down the line so if you missed your chance to get Kanara you will eventually have that chance once again and this is another way that you're going to be able to get more tokens for those tavern heroes whereas in season two and beyond it's going to take a long time to get access to them here in this daily deal bundle so all that to say the legendary heroes in the game right now feel very powerful because that's all that we have but later down the line these are probably going to be the worst legendary heroes in the game so save your tokens spend them wisely do not pump them all into emery's just because you see insane battle reports yes i've seen them too yes he's very good but this game is about long-term investment not short term don't get emotional don't get too excited save your tokens okay now the second mistake that i'm seeing literally everybody is making right now is waging too much war in call of dragons and i know that that sounds insane right this is a war game literally like that's the whole point of this game but if your hall is not level 25 right now you should almost never be fighting in war now this game is different than rise of kingdoms in rise of kingdoms in order to heal your troops you have to spend resources in this game you can heal some of your troops for free which is great and that also encourages people to fight in war and honestly that's fine and that's cool however a lot of players are fighting in war and I'm seeing their power is not going down what that means is their resource healing okay so as much as we want to sit there and say oh well you can heal your troops for free in this game so it's fine to fight the reality is players aren't really doing that players are using resources to heal because they want to get back into the fight because it's fun and I totally get that of course it's a game you want to have fun in a game but it doesn't stop there right because some of you might be saying Omniarch that's not me I don't use I don't do resource healing and that's good you should you shouldn't do that but if your troops are filling your hospital even if you're healing them for free you're now going to have fewer troops at your disposal in that period to fight the darklings out in the open world and in the early game these are actually kind of hard like you actually do need a good portion or a good number of troops in order to take down these darklings in any substantial number right but it doesn't end there because healing with resources is not the only thing that I see players do when it comes to war if your alliance is at war with other players then you are more inclined to rush your military technology in order to participate and be more effective in that war look at this I haven't even finished this for cavalry because I don't care I'm barely waging war and if it is it is certainly not with cavalry because that is not my most effective open field march at this time and yes tier four is absolutely your first goal here in call of dragons you want to get tier four you pretty much can't be an effective fighter in this game without tier four I mean that's kind of just 
how it is unless it's like the first week of a server like you pretty much need tier four to do anything in this game so while you should be making progress towards this and as you can see I'm I'm, I'm pretty much there you should be focusing on your economic technology and what I'm seeing is a lot of players their alliances are getting into early game wars and they're taking their focus away from their economic technology and focusing more heavily on their military tech when they shouldn't be doing that for example the reason that i'm not doing economic tech right now is because i can't go any farther with scholarship this is like the most important thing for me was this i have to upgrade my city hall first before i can do that so right now is the perfect time for me to focus on getting to tier four and yes i guess i could technically upgrade my city hall and then focus more on these things and then yes tier four would be cheaper but i've spent a little bit in this game i'm not exactly a free-to-play player so i'm not doing things perfectly but if you're free to play you pretty much have to be uh perfect if you want things to go as quickly as they possibly can and waging more in the early game and investing in your military tech in the early game just makes absolutely no sense it makes absolutely no sense it's only going to slow down your progress because the more you have an economic tech the more resources you're going to have the less it's going to cost to do things and the faster you're going to progress which doesn't seem like a big deal when you're hall level one through 16 but once you trust me once you start getting up to hall level 20 plus it takes a long time to upgrade these buildings and it's extremely expensive it takes millions and millions of resources to upgrade these things so you need your economic technology it's not fun or cool to upgrade your economic technology but this is the best long-term strategy and waging war in the early game encourages doing the wrong thing but it doesn't stop just there because it also encourages your alliance to focus more on war technology as well which is not what you should be doing alliances in the early game should be focusing on development tech they should be focusing on getting as many resources into the hands of the players in that alliance as possible this means that alliances should be forming treaties with other alliances growing peacefully until these alliances are filled with players that have city hall 25. a rising tide raises all ships and if you're waging war as an alliance leader then you have to think okay well we have to put something into the military tech because then you're going to have a higher probability of winning that war and that makes sense logically but the actual correct decision is you shouldn't wage war in the early game like that makes no sense now you're not going to get along with everybody I, I understand that and sometimes war is has to be waged and lord knows that the alliance that i'm in we there's been plenty of war to be waged but making allies and postponing war is definitely the better play in the long run because even if you wage a ton of war in season one and your alliance ends up winning the season right you're almost certainly going to go into season two at a much bigger disadvantage than those players who focus on being in an alliance that focuses on growth rather than winning season one winning season one is not the end goal that is not going to change your life in call of dragons nobody is going to care about season one when you talk about season two season three season four season five season six season seven season eight and the one thing that you're going to keep for all of that is your tier five units and your city hall progress okay a lot of things reset every season this does not so you should be focusing on the things that don't reset in my opinion season one progress is not nearly as important as as unlocking tier five units as getting your hall to level 25 those things are what matter the most because yes you might lose season one but you're going to be in a much better position for every single season that comes after that and again this game is about opportunity cost and long-term investment what might feel good now and make sense right now might not be the best long-term strategy so yes if you're waging a ton of war right now you may want to focus on your war tech and go all in on emery's but those are the two worst things that you can do for your account progress that i that i've seen so many people do and it is absolutely insane and just to be clear okay as my final point i'm not saying don't wage war right the fact that you heal troops for free is good there is some war that you can wage but understand that if you are like mass training tier threes for war you are making a huge mistake you are making a massive error if you are speeding up your tech so you can focus on upgrading your military tech before you've gone all the way into the economic tech as far as you can go you're making a huge mistake if you are pumping all of your legendary tokens into a hero like garwood you're making a huge mistake so wage war but don't do it at the cost of the progress of your account because you're gonna lose all the other wars that come in the future 
as a result of that trust me in six to 12 months you're going to come back to this video and say oh my god omniarch thank you so much for this advice i'm finally hitting tier five units and all my friends aren't anyway guys with that being said if you enjoyed this video and found it useful or informative drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other call of dragons players might see it comment down below some more mistakes that you've seen other players make that you think is a big problem and maybe i'll talk about it in a future video and while you're down there make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a call of dragons video we are so close to 50,000 subscribers we're like 500 away at the time of recording this so go ahead and drop a sub and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace